Hello everyone, today we are going to be talking about Git. Git being the collaborative tool that is used uh, to work uh, together as a team or by yourself uh, without driving your, uh, you mad. Uh, driving here being an operative pun on Google Drive of course and Dropbox and other file sharing solutions which uh, may or may not be intended and perfectly functional for software development work or uh, let's say uh, yeah, software engineering. Um, so yeah, uh, Git is something you're going to be exposed to a lot in, uh, while working in InfoSec or Nocent, so it's good to get a small handle as to how it works initially, uh, thinking mostly for the people in uh, this chat at least too. <laughs> Moving on, my name is Nicholas Burke, I am Atomic Nikos, an admin of this server, you've probably interacted with me before, and I'll be bringing you through this ordeal of Git. So what are we going to be talking about? Well, first we're going to be talking about what Git is, um, what concepts are underlying, then the various platforms that Git can run on, uh, that can host a Git instance, for example, and then we're going to talk about how it works uh, with in-depth demos and uh, you know, really going in depth as to how it works, and then uh, the various tools that one can use to work with a Git. So what is Git? Git is a VCS, a version control system, or a version control tool if you're using the, the command line interface, for example, also called Git. Uh, it allows people to uh, build software incrementally and p uh, other people to access that software uh, at any increment they choose to. Also allows people to work together on software, uh, which is very nice because then they can, you know, uh, all work on their own end, on their own tasks, and then all build the bricks that are then going to be the end software. One of the other advantages of a VCS is that it's a workflow that is reversible. If someone messes up, you can roll back the changes and then come to something that is then interesting. Interesting and functional, of course. So now let's discuss some Git platforms. Um, the first one would be GitHub which is uh, the most well-known Git platform uh, to date. Uh, it's owned by Microsoft, and uh, it's one of the more accessible ones. Another platform would be, for example, GitLab. Uh, GitLab is a platform that uh, can be self-hosted on uh, on a server, it has a free community edition that, uh, that you know you can host yourself or on a, uh, at a home server, on a home lab, uh, or on a VPS, you know, dedicated hosting. Uh, it's also the one that you'll most likely see in university settings. The one is, for example, Amazon's Bitbucket, uh, most well known for you know uh, leaky buckets full of credentials, uh, especially for us in the infosec industry. But uh, Bitbucket is still a viable Git alternative. The final solution, the the, the one that is uh, the the funkiest in my sense is Keybase. Keybase being, you know, this encrypted messaging system, uh, which also acts as a social network, uh, also has a feature that is used uh, for Git. And this feature allows people to host entire Git repositories, or the, the at least the, the modifications in the Git repositories, on Keybase. So that's also pretty interesting. So how does it work? Um, well, Basically, it uses trees, uh, but don't go thinking a forest. Uh, think more a tree graph that you would use uh, that you would see in mathematics, for example. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be deep diving the .git directory. Uh, so the one that happens when you're creating a uh, you know a Git project, and we're going to do this live. So that's going to be fun. Uh, and I really hope this is recording. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up a shell here. So this is a shell. I am first going to um, add a small alias to it just for fun. Uh, it's so you can see what's going on. So it's a Pro alias that's going to uh, 
basically allow us to view things in a different light. Uh, uh, this is going to be available, by the way. Don't. Uh, yeah. This should be fantastic, right? Let's totally ignore what I just did. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a folder. Uh, you don't have to uh, follow along, but it's always nice. So uh, right now, okay, this is a uh, directory. And I'm just going to CD in it uh, by default. There we go. A file exists, right? There we go. Uh, and so as you can see, this directory is pretty much empty. Well, it is empty. And what we're going to do is we're going to just initialize a repository. So git init, that's how you initialize a repository. Uh, increase the font size. Yeah, there we go. So initializing repository does this. And what this will change is nothing unless you look for the hidden directories. So it's going to create a small .git folder. Now the .git folder, is fun because it basically shows you a ton of stuff. For example, you have the head file. The head file is basically going to tell you your uh, current branch. There we go. We're in uh, preferences, heads, master, right? Uh, branches, it's a directory right here. That's uh, the directory that basically tracks your branches, right? Config is going to do the configuration of your. Um, uh, of this repository, like if you have, uh, let's say, enterprise credentials for one specific repository, that's where you would add them. Uh, description, uh, that's something no one does. Uh, hooks for web hooks. Info, uh, repository information, objects, which is basically a, a spicy database of, uh, of your, all your files. And references, which is basically the tracking of all the changes over time of your objects. Um, so that's enjoyable, right? So what we're going to do now is we're just going to create a file. Uh, so we're just going to call it like, I don't know, uh, echo readme, right? That happened. Uh, and we're just going to create a small file. There we go. We're totally not in the right place. So. Uh, Right. Shouldn't have done that in the Git directory. So now we have a readme file. It's on readme file. There's one thing in it, and that's about it. So what we can do now is we can see what happened. We're first going to add it to our Git, uh, basically to our index for staging. Right. So, right. Git add readme. And now we're going to compare what happened here than, uh, than what happened afterwards. So cd git and now ls. .oi. As you can see, uh, you have head, branches, config, description, hooks, info, objects, right? Well, here you also have an index. That index is pretty interesting. It's a new thing. So what happens if I try to deflate index? If M option contains signal. Uh, did, did I screw up my? Yeah, I screwed up my deflate command. This is not how I expected this to go. Why is this jumping over? There we go. This is supposed to be two colons, and my shell is being a bit of an idiot. Right, so ridiculous. Nothing is an index, which makes sense, right? Um, because I've added the things. And what we're basically going to do now is we are going to check the objects. All right, so we're going to go to objects, going to go to basically 7E, which is an object, right? And there we have this. So. There we can just say uh, deflate five nine, all of this jazz, and as you can see, there's a blob which is a file, right? And nine, which is the length. Uh, so you would have a hash space, the six characters of readme. All of that does eight plus character return. Well, uh, n character, you know, backslash zero. So it's a nine length 
uh, nine character length blob, which is basically README. So that's fantastic. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our main directory and we are going to commit uh, something. All right, so that would be here. We're going to do a commit. This is going to add it to our current branch. So this, when you do a commit, gives you this fantastic nano environment uh, where we're basically just going to add a commit message. Uh, so we're just going to call it on a commit. You save, you exit, command S, command X, or control. S control X, right? And basically what we can do now is we can see the commit message, right? So commit, commit edit message, you can see that there is a commit. Uh, if for example, I was unsatisfied with my commit message or with the files, I could very quickly do git commit amend. Like if I'd added files and like we can just call this commit amended. Uh, there we go. So there we have a commit and it's been amended. Fantastic. Uh, so just for cleanliness sake, I'm just going to rename my, uh, my branch uh, master uh, from master to main. So that's how you rename a branch, git branch dash M for move and main. That's a new name. Now to go onto a new branch, uh, there is git checkout. That's going to check out a branch. And since we don't yet have another branch, we're going to create it with dash B. Dash B staging, for example. Staging is the name of our new branch. So switch to new branch staging. Fantastic. So for example, we can see the logs of a branch. So we can go maybe git logs, uh, refs, heads, and then main. As you can see, there's an initial commit uh, from me, uh, certain stuff, k okay, plus one, commit, initial commit, commit amended, etc. We can do the same thing with staging. That happens as well. We can also do maybe git log. There we go. Git log, gonna show us the log of what happened. Git log stat is going to show us the differences in files between what happened. So that's fantastic. Now we're just going to add, let's say, an about file, right? So git echo about, so let's call it about.md, right? Uh, we're going to get add about.md, uh, git commit dash m, that's uh, how you do a commit message by default and we're just going to do uh, like add about md and what this is going to do compared to what we saw before it's not going to prompt you to enter a commit message it's just going to add this as a commit message right so if i were to cat dot git uh, commit edit message add about md that's fantastic right we're going to do yet another one. Let's say echo, uh, right, test to test.md, git app test, right, git commit dash m test. The reason why we're doing that is we're, because we're going to do some rebasing afterwards, uh, right, at test.md. Fantastic, we've committed. And now we can do something else. So, now we're going to do a merge. So a merge is basically when you need to bring one branch, the changes you've done to one branch into another branch. So for example, we're going to check out main again. There we go. So we've, we're now in branch main. What we want is to bring the changes from uh, staging into main. Easy way to do that, git merge staging. Now, two things can happen. Either it's going to work by default if there have been no changes on main, or it's going to ask you to basically do some choosing. Right now, we've done no uh, changes on main, so it's fantastic. It's going to fast forward the merge, as you can see here, right? Fast forward, it just adds the files, poof, magic. That's fantastic. And basically what we can do now is now that we have 
uh, get let's say log. We have all of these things. Head. That's a log. Once again. Uh, for main. So now we see that there's about.md and test.md in main. Fantastic. What now? Well, now we're going to push everything to the final repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the digital overdose repository. Right, I'm going to create a small repository. Uh, let's call it DO example or something. Uh, is available. Makes sense. Right, create a repository. And now we have a repository somewhere on the internet. Now how we're going to fix, uh, like add an origin, we're just going to grab this. And we're going to go back to our shell and we're going to go git remote add origin. What this is, uh, what this is going to do is going to add a destination or some place where your repository should be hosted. And, and that repository will be named origin. Uh, in terms of how you, your uh, your Git repository views it, right? And then we just paste in Git at GitHub the SSH address for this. Now uh, this will work, but the following might not work depending on if you you have SSH keys or not configured. So for example, if you were to go, uh, if I were to cat, um, right? Uh, say ls right uh, because i probably don't want to be sharing my public keys with you even if they're public right uh there you have rsa.pub right and this file should be found in your ssh keys so if i go to settings for example ssh and apg keys and there's a few keys here and one of these probably this one is the one that is here. This enables you to push using uh, our, um, SSH, which is going to stop you from having to log in every five minutes, which is fantastic. So we're going to push and we're going to specify the upstream. So that's dash u. And so the upstream sh should be origin, like the remote we added, right? And main, main being our local branch, right? So I'm pushing all this. This is going to do itself, right? Fantastic branch main set to track remote. I'm going to go back here. One, one, there we go. I refresh this. And as you see, we now have files on Git. That's fantastic. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go back to our presentation and move on. And this is where it gets fun. It's that at some point you might or might not fuck up. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to do is basically view the three R's: remove, rebase, and reset. What happens with remove, rebase, and reset? For example, remove removes the file. Fantastic. Rebase is going to change the structure of your Git tree. And reset is going to, well, reset uh, your your tree to somewhere else. So the simple way would be, for example, to do, uh, let's just add a new file, right? Um, echo remove me to uh, remove me.md. This is the one we're going to want to remove, right? Git add dot git. Uh, so the dot is going to add everything that's new, right? And then git commit dash m uh, add remove me dot md. Now we have remove me dot md added. Thing is, we didn't want remove me dot md. Uh, it was let's say an API key. Let's be crazy, right? This this isn't an API key. So what we want is we want to remove it. Okay. Dot md. Remove me.md, poof. As you can see, it's not here anymore. And it's not hosted by Git either. That means it's been fully removed. There's no log of it anymore. Uh, unless, you know, you have the commit log. So what we're going to do now is we're going to commit yet again. Sham 
remove, remove me.md. However, uh, if we look at our git log, you'll see that we've added something and removed something. That means that if you're like not smart enough, but if you know how to navigate commits, you can view the changes that have been done, which means let's say I've added an API key. Well, that's bad because I can see the API key being added and then removed, which is you know, bad. What we're going to do now is we're basically going to clear out the console again, and we're going to do a uh, rebase. Rebases are something fantastic in that uh, they work a little bit magically, and sometimes they don't work as you expect. So dash i is the interactive rebase. And what you'll notice is it will pop out a new uh, nano equivalent. There we go. And it's going to pick the two latest things. And you'll see that they are in uh, chronologic order. The, and the oldest one is at the top and the youngest one is at the bottom. That's going to, to well, it might screw you over. So what you want to do, perhaps, like, okay, you have add remove me.md, remove remove me.md. Well, that's not helpful because we want to remove all of this. Right. Uh, or we just want to go back to add. Let's let's do it that way. Okay. So we'll just squash the removal into the add. That's going to be magic. Let's do this. Interactive rebase in progress. Done. Currently remained. You asked to amend the most recent commits. Uh, you can repeat your command with allow empty. Right. Okay, there is a currently one. Okay, continue. Th this is why sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, now this has changed itself a bit. Right, and now if you go back to control X again, it's successfully rebased. Let me go back into git log. As you can see, one has been rebased, but you can still see that something has changed. So that's an issue. Uh, so we're going to want to do a reset. Uh, there's two kinds of resets. There's a mixed reset, which is going to uh, basically remove part of your commit history and just, you know, uh, keep the changes. And there's a hard reset. Uh, the mixed one, so you need to grab your commit ID, right? So git log, let me just grab this one. And we just go here and we go put here, uh, git reset dash dash mixed to this okay my git log as you can see we've removed an additional one we've removed this one fantastic but what's going on is that okay maybe we didn't want uh, that so we're going to reset even further except we're going to do a hard reset that means you can't go back up shut the fuck up no sorry it's eaten but um, I hate telegram pinging. Uh, right. So we're now going to do a git reset hard to this. Head is now at, and this is going to destroy everything that's upwards of that. So it's a pretty destructive operation. So that's fantastic. Uh, seeing some things in how not to mess up. Uh, <laughs> that's a fun one. Um, the basic idea is not to do any uh, big R operations. So, you know, uh, reset, rebase, etc. Uh, remove also without being entirely certain that you want to remove things. Um, and if you're going to remove sensitive things, making a copy of them beforehand is always good. So uh, if I were to I don't know, copy a uh, key out, I would copy it to the side do my things, and if it doesn't turn out how I expected it to, I can either hard reset to where I was going, or uh, do it the other way around. So, what can we do now? Well, the thing is, if I were to push this uh, upwards, it would fail, right? Uh, it's rejected, because the tip of the branch, which is where we're currently at in the logs, is underneath what happened before we pushed, which is bad, right? Big. It means that uh, the repository is regressed. Well, thankfully, um, it's not that bad. Because we can just 
force that changes. Uh, basically, if you have force, be certain of what you're doing because it's not entirely reversible. So as you can see now, if we go here, uh, there's only been two commits, whereas I've actually committed five times. And there is just the about and the readme. No remove me, no um, other things. That's fantastic. So let's go back to here. Demo, right? So tools that will get you out of trouble. Uh, for example, GitHub Desktop has a very good uh, interface. Uh, Git Kraken, also a very good interface. And my personal favorite is Fork. Uh, not because it's specifically fantastic, it's just that I've gotten very used to it. Uh, so I'm going to do you a small demo of a uh, fork while I'm at it. Um, right, so this is a repository. Let's go here and let's clone our Git repository, right? So we're going to go to clone uh, Git repository URL. That would be this, but we're going to want the SSH version of this. So SSH is always nicer if you have the SSH keys configured. SSH uh, code. Do example two. Okay, this is I'm going to clone it. I'm going to receive the objects. Fantastic, beautiful, and as you can see, we already have our tree. Uh, so one word of warning is that uh, fork uh, is technically freemium, but it's the WinRAR version of freemium where you can just close the prompt that says to buy and also work. Uh, so that's always nice. Uh, that's actually kind of why I like it. Uh, so as you can see, we have a commit amended. Uh, we have our about with our changes in them. Uh, so what we can do now is uh, just, if you have a, an editor uh, on hand, you can just open this in Visual Studio Code, for example. And there it is. Uh, and let me just do the exact same thing as before. So let's just do a todo.md, right? Uh, and we're just going to say, hey, uh, uh, this is a to-do file, right? Uh, to-do, to-do. I, I save it. Fantastic. And as you can see here, there's changes that have popped up. So these stages aren't changed. The, the software has tracked that there have been changes, but that's about it. Uh, so what you can do is you can stage them, which is the equivalent of git add. And you can unstage them, which is not the equivalent of git remove. Fucking hell. Um, so you can stage this, fantastic. And you can uh, basically do a commit. So let's commit, uh, do a commit subject. Uh, let's say, okay, committing to do, right? Add to do, do.md, commit one file. I know it's a little bit ridiculous to work with one file. As you can see here, you ha in your visualization, you have the origin, which is distant you know, on GitHub, and you have the local tracking of your changes. That's fantastic. If I were to add a branch, let's say a local branch called dev. There we go, dev. Both dev and main are at the same place. If I now go here and I, let's say, add another file called license. I, uh, I don't know how to type license. It is the main uh, takeaway. All right, let's just say license. Okay, and we'll just say uh, this is CC, no, uh, there we go. Um, always nice to do things with uh, WTFPL, right? Uh, what the, uh, do whatever the fuck you want, uh, public license. Right, so as you can see, one change. Awesome, that stage, that license, the uh, same jazz as usual, right? And as you can see, dev has this commanded, main has this commanded, right? Uh, I could go back to main and merge this in. So if I check out main by double clicking on it, I can right click on dev and say, hey, merge into main. There we go, merge. And there we go, it's merged everything. Fantastic. I can also go back to dev, for example, 
and push dev. Uh, push and uh, right, push dev to origin. What this is going to do is it's going to create the branch dev, but on GitHub. Go, so push. Magic. And as you can see here, you'll see that dev had recent pushes, but also that I have more than one branch. One branch main, one branch dev. So, and I can you know, liberally switch between them. So that's one of the fan, uh, fantastic things. Like here, I'm here. Okay, I will be our full files. And here we have main and dev at the same place. But I can very well just check out, uh, go on the main branch, right? And check out this. Check out commit. As you can see, there is no license.md. So this is fantastic. This uh, allows you to move around. Now, let's say that I'm not happy with adding my license. Uh, so we're going to do a, a rebase, right? So how this would work is, okay, we can rebase commit. So, uh, right, so we're going to check out this commit and rebase to here. It would be, right, uh, interactive rebase, rebase interactively to here. And we're just going to squash it in. Fantastic. Yeah, without a previous commit. Well, that's, uh, that's my bad. Uh, let's abort the rebase. Uh, so we go to main. And we rebase to here. Right? Interactive rebase to there. Cool. We're going to pick the add to do. And we're going to squash this one. It's going to squash everything in here. Fantastic. This will happen on its own. So you see now we have two things. And let's say that we want to merge dev into main. This can be merged without conflicts. Fantastic. Uh, but we're not going to do that, just for fun. And now if we want to push main, what happens if we want to push main? It's going to fail, most probably. Or it's going to succeed. Shocking. Right. Um, but there's also this thing about resetting, right? So the thing about resets is you have soft, okay, keep all changes, stage differences. I'm going to basically remove all that has been done and uh, re-add everything. Soft, which we're going to do now, which is basically resetting main to here. So fantastic. Okay, and then we have all this. It's also very beautiful. Uh, so let's revert that. All right. Uh, yep. Or we can just reset. Uh, let's say we want to reset main to here, and we just want to do hard. This is going to force main to some different places. So all of this is fantastic, because you can move around and basically it's a way faster way of not dying. And that's basically the, the initial uh, idea. So right, uh, now that I've presented that, uh, talk, CC by C, etc. Uh, and yeah, ask me anything. Will you be publishing these slides? I will. Cool. Did you record it? I did. I may have failed the, the first 10 minutes though, so I only need to re-record the 10 first minutes. That's uh, fine. I only added the OBS uh, audio input capture source after realizing that 10 minutes had gone by. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I know that feeling. Hmm. Um, awesome. I missed most of this because I was at dinner, so I was pretty lost like 90% of the way. I'm sorry. You'll get to reread it, review it. Don't worry. Thanks. Right. So, anyone else have questions? You can either type it in no mic or just mm, unmute yourselves. If not, just feel free to ping me anyways and anywhere, anytime. Uh, I might pick up if I'm not asleep or busy. And yeah, um, these slides will be uh, public. The recording, once it has been fixed, is going to be uh, on Patreon. Uh, sunlight is typing. Okay, so we're probably going to catch a question uh, in the meantime. Uh, what else? I got a question. Go on. 
Um, <clears throat> just generally, so people can uh, maybe learn these things uh, in depth, uh, just on a specific area. Um, what do you recommend people do when they're uploading uh, large files? I may have missed that part, I'm not too sure if you've already explained it. Uh, so large but... files, right, I, I haven't explained that because it's not very, uh, let's say, regular use case. Uh, it's a very huge yeah. use case, for example. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so large files, right? Uh, problem is that uh, Sable, the, the slides are going to be public. Um, and uh, so back to you. Uh, the thing is that GitHub, GitLab, etc. have a limit on the size of files, which makes sense because you're not supposed to be, uh, let's say, hosting movies, files, or whatever. And basically what you're going to run into is that the, the platform is just going to, to reject your files on push. So the easiest way to do this is if you have, uh, let's say, sort of files that are not binary in nature, so text files, for example, uh, you comp uh, you split them and you compress them using, for example, uh, G uh, so gzip, for example. And that is going to be fun. That's about it. So you compress and you push. And if that doesn't work, you split and you compress and you push. One more, one more question, uh, so people can uh, get to know more. So can I? Um, is there any um, files that are uh, compressed files that um, GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket reject? Not in nature. You can you can put raw zips, uh, gzips or whatever on there. Uh, problem is that they don't they need to not be damaged and route. That's the issue where they need to be downloaded correctly. That's also an issue uh, if Yeah If uh, github kind of fucks up on that end uh, You'll need to repush or do something to your files and then repush um, Okay, are there any relevant cheat sheets about git about what commands are always used mistakes that should not be made Actually, there's even a mug, if you'd believe it. Uh, there's a mug, there's a there's mouse pad, uh, there's multiple things. Uh, but yeah, there is a Git cheat sheet, and uh, I am probably going to post it in the uh, channel right afterwards, once we're done with uh, the recording. Anything else? <laughs> right, so uh, I'm going to end the recording here. Uh, you'll be able to find the slides into during announcements, I think. And uh, yeah, that's it for me.